Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. So the work that I'm going to present today, today is mainly focused on the modeling of power system, large scale power systems for geomagnetic disturbance simulations using EMTP. Uh, so here is quickly uh, a background for, in case you are not very familiar with GMD. This is what happens. So uh, a geomagnetic disturbance is essentially a temporal variation in Earth's magnetic field caused by uh, solar storms. So what happens is uh, during the solar storms, uh, a significant amount of uh, charged particles are released into space. And the interaction of these charged particles with Earth's atmosphere results in uh, significant changes in Earth's magnetic field. From the viewpoint of a power system engineer, these uh, changes can be seen or can be modeled as a, uh, a box of, a moving box of currents above the Earth's surface. Uh, this is about 100, 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and the magnitude of this current could be up to 1 million amp. So this current has a very small frequency from the range, in the range of uh, millihertz. And uh, these electrojets, they induce a varying uh, elect magnetic field. And uh, in this figure, this is dB by dt. And this magnetic field, this varying magnetic field induces, again, a varying potential on Earth's surface. So this potential results, the potential here is shown by E. The potential results in uh, quasi-DC uh, currents circulating into the transformers and into the transmission lines. So the impacts of these currents in power systems, first of all, is transformer saturation. This is the transformer is the main cause of problems uh, in, a GM, uh, in a geomagnetic disturbance. So the, the transformers get saturated, and as a result, they get, um, they, they hot spot uh, is formed on transformer, and the transformer can get damaged. The other uh, consequence is uh, the, because the transformer is now saturated, it is in a nonlinear uh, state, so it injects harmonics. The currents are no longer, the magnetization current of the transformer is no longer sinusoidal, so it injects a significant amount of harmonics in the system, and these injected harmonics can produce uh, other problems, for example, for protection system that is sensitive to harmonics, this could cause uh, unnecessary tripping of uh, critical equipment in the system. The other impact of saturation is increased VAR consumption. So now the transformer becomes a source of, it's like an inductor now, it's absorbing a significant amount of VAR in this, uh, from the system, and this tends to cause voltage regulation problems. And in uh, severe cases, in extreme cases, if the system cannot supply uh, this increased VAR demand, the system may run into voltage collapse uh, and uh, blackout. So the reference standard, reliability standard for this uh, study, for GMD study, is TPL7, which requires uh, applicable entities to conduct vulnerability, GMD vulnerability assessment, and in case their system does not meet uh, the specified NERC requirement, then they have to provide, they have to devise uh, mitigation strategies. So the applicable entities in this case are basically transmission system planners and generator owners. So the, the market there is huge. So uh, I quickly uh, go to uh, simulation studies that are uh, required by NERC standard. So the first study that NERC is requiring is GIC flow. So the, to calculate these DC currents that are circulating in transformers and transmission lines. And the other one is transformer bar consumption. Uh, harmonics also uh, are required to study the, the response of protection, the response of control and protection system, and also voltage regulation issues and voltage collapse, and also thermal response of transformers. So here, here are the existing methods for GMD simulation studies. Uh, we have, broadly, they can, we can categorize them into phasor domain and EMT type methods. So phasor domain packages 
and phasor domain methods because they cannot model nonlinearities uh, and because they are bound to only the 60 hertz component, uh, they have to make a specific assumptions regarding the, the condition of power system during a GMD. Uh, using these specific assumptions, you are able to calculate GICs. However, the GIC, the DC currents, they are modeled separately from the AC network. So you solve a DC load flow to calculate the DC currents and then inject these DC currents, estimate the bar consumption and inject them into the AC network. The other um, study is uh, VAR consumption. So for for VAR consumption of transformers, they use a widely used, a uh, well-known technique called the K factor, uh, which is basically an estimation. You model a nonlinear saturation of a transformer using a linear equation, and uh, uh, inject these equation, these uh, VAR consumptions into the AC network. So the the challenge of the existing tools, the phasor domain tools, first of all, is that they only provide a solution at 60 hertz you can solve the DC uh, component separately, but uh, you cannot simulate harmonics. So that's a big limitation. So therefore you cannot study the impact of uh, harmonics on system protection, for example. The other limitation is that because of the lack of nonlinear solver, you have to solve DC and AC separately. Now this is a limitation because uh, we don't know if they interact or not. So if the interaction between DC and AC is significant, then the operating condition of the power system during a GMD may be significantly different from what you see in simulations using phasor domain packages. And uh, this, the DC and AC coupling uh, is uh, basically because now your system is nonlinear. You're in a nonlinear state, and therefore the superposition principle, which allows you to add different harmonics, it may not hold because Superposition is uh, only valid in a linear system. The other limitation is, of course, the modeling of iron core nonlinearities, which is not possible. The other, uh, so EMTP, it's not bound by these limitations, so we can uh, solve the DC and AC components together. Uh, we, we don't need to make any specific assumptions regarding a steady state. We can also solve uh, the dynamics of a GMD. We can solve the varying time, uh, time varying waveforms and uh, also uh, we can accurately represent iron core nonlinearities and transformer topology uh, of course harmonics they can be done using appropriate models in EMTP and we can run voltage collapse simulation in time domain so here are some uh, results that uh, we have recently obtained so um, in order to run GMD simulations in EMTP, first we need to model the geoelectric field. The geoelectric field is simply the DC voltages that are induced on transmission lines due to the magnetic field. So in EMTP, we are able to model a user-defined time-varying GF waveform. In other packages, you can only model a DC a constant geoelectric field, but here we are not bound by that. So we don't need to make any assumption regarding the, the geoelectric field waveform. And uh, here is, for example, uh, the, the GEF waveform of the benchmark GMD event of NERC, which you can, you can see is highly time varying. And uh, the other modeling requirement is transformer model. As I explained, we can model transformer nonlinearities. Here is, for example, the nonlinear transformer core of an example transformer. The data is based on a measurement test on the real North American utility transformer. We are able to incorporate these actual data into the model and see what happens exactly in time domain. Uh, the other capability is transformer core model. It's extremely important for GMD studies to take into account the core construction because not all constructions are um, equally vulnerable to GMD. For example, in the case of five-leg core, you have a return path for the flux. But in the case of three-leg core, there is no return path. So the flux has to close its path through the air gap and through the tank. So it is important to model the air gap and tank 
So uh, using the recently developed topological model of transformer, we are able to study the response of transformer to GMD, to uh, GIC, uh, the, the DC current. So here is, for example, uh, the, a, a schematic diagram of the five-leg transformer model in EMTP. Uh, and a, a study that we are currently doing is to investigate the impact of different topological parameters on the saturation characteristics of uh, the transformer. For example, we are able to change the, the area of the return leg, the two side legs, and see what impact it has on the generated VAR of the transformer. This is extremely important in GMD studies because the, the, if you cannot accurately represent the VAR consumption of the transformer, you may get erroneous results regarding voltage, uh, uh, voltage uh, stability and voltage regulation issues. So here is uh, some example. For example, this is uh, how the system looks under normal conditions. So the flux, the magnetic flux is sinusoidal, purely sinusoidal, and the magnetization current is also sinusoidal. That's because your, the transformer is operating in the linear region of the system. However, when you have a GMD, you have a DC bias uh, being imposed on the flux, on transformer flux, and therefore the uh, operating point of the transformer curve changes, and now, as you can see, you're starting to enter the saturation region, and therefore, the, magnetic, the magnetization current is no longer sinusoidal. So it, it is distorted, and these distortions, they are, they, they create harmonics and they are injected into the system. So it creates uh, problems for system protection. And in EMTP, it's amazing that we can see all these waveforms in time domain and accurately calculate the harmonics. This is a capability that is only limited to EMTP compared to existing tools, uh, GMD analysis tools. So uh, another impact of this increased magnetization current level is, as I said, increased VAR consumption of the transformer. So here is the results of some uh, a transformer, a, a test we uh, performed for a transformer manufacturer. Uh, we are subjecting the transformer to different GIC currents to see the saturation behavior. As you can see, the transformer, not only are we able to see the, the steady state value of VAR, but we are also able to model the dynamics, the slow buildup of uh, transformer VAR and DC flux. Uh, so uh, you can see that the transformer does not show the same dynamic at different GIC levels. We are able to calculate that. Uh, the other model, important model for GMD studies is a transmission line. Of course, for harmonic studies, we need to have a frequency dependent line model, a model that is accurate, that is capable of accurately representing line impedance at different frequencies. And um, load model also, we can model dynamic loads, um, exponential loads, and we can also take into account the impact of unload tap changer. So all these factors, they, uh, they play an important role in GMD simulations. For example, OLTC unload tap changer has an impact on voltage stability, on voltage regulation. Uh, dynamic load also impacts voltage stability. So these modeling requirements uh, should be taken into account. A machine model, we are able to uh, model the control of a machine. Overexcitation limiter of the machine is an important control which uh, defines the reactive power uh, generation of the machine and it impacts uh, voltage stability because if you fail to take it into account then uh, the machine may be injecting too much reactive power uh, into the grid and the results will not be accurate compared to actual uh, scenarios. So the other important piece of modeling detail is substation grounding resistance, of course, the, um, the model of the ground. Uh, in EMTP, we model the ground as a lumped uh, series RL branch. And uh, another important piece of uh, data is uh, substation GPS coordinates. We, this is important to calculate the DC voltages that are induced on transmission lines. So some examples, we have developed a model, a, bench, a test case. Uh, we call it GMD118. 
it includes all these modeling details, the model of transmission lines, the model of transformers. They all include the nonlinear characteristic that I just showed you. The generator models include control and uh, also protection for uh, specialized studies. Uh, the machines can also include protection. We are also uh, putting harmonic measurement devices everywhere to measure the injected harmonics. And of course, we are taking into account uh, the geoelectric field. So some results. Uh, this is the results of simulation of NERC benchmark GMD event. So this is the DC voltage, the GEF that we have uh, simulated in this case. We have selected a portion of this GEF waveform, and here is the results. So it's a little bit uh, small. I hope you can read it from the back of the room. So uh, figure A shows the simulated geoelectric field. So it's a time-varying geoelectric field. B shows the DC currents that start to circulate in the system. As you can see, we apply the GEF at about uh, 10 seconds, uh, 10 or 20, yeah, it's 10 seconds. And as soon as we apply it, the GIC currents start to flow. Now, the GICs, uh, we can see their dynamics as well as their uh, steady state value. Uh, figure C shows the DC flux bias that is produced in transformer core. This is what saturates the transformer. Figure D shows the amplitude of the magnetization current of transformer. You can see the amplitude increases drastically due because now the transformer enters saturation. As a result, figure E shows the Q consumption, the VAR consumption of the transformers, which increased significantly compared to uh, before. And in figure F, you can see system bus voltages. So due to this increased reactive power demand, system bus voltages start to decrease. So to compensate for that, to regulate the voltage, unload tap changers start playing with tap positions, as shown in figure G. And machines, synchronous machines, inject reactive power into the network, as shown in figure H. However, the operation of the unload tap changers is limited by uh, a, a threshold. So in this case, the number of taps was limited to plus minus eight. So the tap changer reaches its limit. The machines are also, they cannot inject infinite reactive power because their operation is limited by overexcitation limiter. So as you can see in I and J, uh, the machine, as soon as the voltage, the terminal voltage starts to decrease, the machine increases the field voltage to inject more reactive power into the grid, and subsequently, consequently, uh, the field current increases, as shown in figure J. However, when the field current reaches a thermal, a specific thermal limit, then the OEL reduces the electric field. So um, this happens around 170 seconds, in this case 176 to be accurate, and so the electric field could no longer increase. So it's reduced, and therefore the machine, the terminal voltage of the machine also decreased uh, quickly, and that resulted in voltage collapse. As you can see, the network collapsed at around 260 seconds. So it's amazing that we can see all these waveforms in time domain. In phasor domain packages, uh, you can only see the steady state values and whether or not the system collapses. And uh, due to the emission of OEL and unload tap changer effect, the results that you see regarding voltage collapse may be different from the actual condition of a power system. So here are some more results. The, the DC currents in transmission lines, so you can see that uh, uh, the DC currents, they, they also show dynamics. They are not exactly DC, they show dynamics. And the transformer bar consumption also, this of course, the, the, the funny part at the end is because the, the network has collapsed. So you're looking at um, a chaotic condition in this case. But before, you can see the dynamics of VAR increase. Here is another study, interesting study that we have done using this test case in EMTP. It is to study the impact of delta resistance. So as you can see, the transformer here on the right, the, the, I showed uh, the VAR consumption of a number of selected transformers of the test case. As you can see, these transformers 
they have a different steady state bar consumption, but they also they get saturated at different rates. Some transformers get saturated very quickly. For example, transformer 8.5. Others take a very long time to saturate. For example, transformer 63 to 59. It, it takes approximately 500 seconds to saturate, order of minutes. So using EMTP, we are able to take into account this slow saturation. If you cannot model this uh, slow saturation, for example, let's say at um, uh, 100 seconds, if I assume that the system goes into, right, uh, into the steady state right away, and I assume that all transformers are consuming maximum reactive power, the steady state reactive power, uh, I will have a different system condition because at 100 seconds, some transformers have not even saturated yet. So this time, uh, time factor is really important to have accurate results. So in the, on the figure uh, on the left, I am sh comparing the saturation rate of three groups of transformers that have different delta resistance. So this saturation rate is impacted by the resistance of delta. Uh, because if you have a small delta resistance, then the, in the circulation of GIC in the delta imposes, uh, induces a small DC voltage on the winding, which slows down the saturation. So in this case, you can see that for three different values of delta resistance, I have three different saturation rates, but the steady state value of the uh, VAR is the same for all of them. So the other study that we have performed is harmonics. Uh, so here is the magnetization current of a, an example transformer, uh, highly distorted, and we are able to look at the harmonic content. It goes up to the 10th harmonic. So the harmonic uh, content study, it is important to um, model the response of protection system. Here is the response, here is the harmonic content of the current that flows into capacitor banks. Capacitor banks, they use harmonic protection because there are certain standards that do not allow uh, harmonic level to be higher than a threshold in a capacitor bank. So we have incorporated that into the system. Here is the response of uh, uh, the overcurrent protection of a capacitor bank of the system. So as you can see uh, on the figure on the top, the terminal current of the cap bank is highly distorted due to the injected harmonics and uh, the, the protection system of the cap bank tripped it at around 200 seconds. Now this, is, uh, this could be very detrimental to the system because uh, the system uh, is losing reactive power support. And so we have presented uh, more uh, results in, uh, in these two papers uh, that are uh, still under review. Uh, so conclusion is uh, phasor domain tools, they may encounter important limitations for studying GMB, uh, especially with regard to the impact of harmonics and nonlinear effects. In EMTP, we have no inherent limitation, so we can uh, calculate harmonics accurately and also nonlinear effect can be modeled. And uh, the main difference between the solution method of EMTP and phasor domain is the accurate coupled solution of DC and AC quantities. Uh, the main advantage of EMTP are that we are able to simulate time domain waveforms, harmonics, and uh, accurately represent the iron core nonlinearities, VAR consumptions, and also time domain simulation of voltage collapse. Thank you. Thank you, Abu Taleb. <laughs> Any questions? Yep, one yeah. second. Ramesh from PSC Consulting. Uh, when you did the transformer saturation, especially when you showed the time delay, um, with respect to core getting into saturation, uh, eventually are you thinking of coming out with some sort of a scaling factor so that we could reduce the amount of time it takes to saturate the core to accelerate the steady process, basically? Okay. Any ideas, suggestions then? Uh, I, I don't understand the question. So uh, oh, you're what saying... I'm, what I'm saying is like, uh, you have put several transformer curves here, right? right? And it takes like 100 seconds or probably 150, and some in some cases it took around 200 seconds to right. saturate. So basically, you need to run your simulation for a long time before the core saturates and you can determine the harmonics, so on and so right. forth. 
Is there any thumb rule or equations to reduce the amount of time it, it takes to drive the code into saturation? No, you cannot do that because this is what happens in reality. Okay, you need to simulate everything in time domain to take into account these time delays. If you somehow reduce this time delay or don't take it into account, the results will not correspond to what happens in reality. So you really have to wait uh, for 400 seconds for the transformer to saturate. There's no other way. You can uh, estimate what happens uh, using a transformer topological model. You can uh, provide guidelines. Uh, but the thing is that to this, this uh, time delay depends also on GIC level and the delta resistance. So right now, I'm not aware of any theoretical formula that can tell you before what this time delay will be. So you have to run the simulation and wait. Perhaps the only thing to mention is that uh, that's, wait, wait. Yeah, that's a discussion actually that uh, we had with Epri the other day. Uh, I, and I showed you today that um, when I was working at Haruka Beck in 89, when they had the storm, the, the, the old days to do uh, 100 seconds would take one week, okay? I'm not joking. So the, the, the only way that we reduce the time, uh, which is not perfect, but it's very good, is we initialize the, the network using harmonic initialization with nonlinearities. That existed in the old MTP code, I developed that. And I didn't put it in a new one because it's a bit complicated mathematically, but I showed it today. So it will not give you the steady state immediately, but it will save you a lot of time because basically it will uh, initialize the nonlinearities, the flux will be correct, the harmonics will be there, and when you start you will have you know, you will say t equals zero, but you will have the contributions of all harmonics. I didn't put it in the top list of priorities, but I think uh, maybe because of the fact that uh, 100 seconds is quite long to wait, actually, maybe we can put it in the higher list of priorities and, and push it. So I think, uh, I think you understand what I mean, uh, Utalib, it means that you, yeah. you, what you said is totally correct, but what I mean by that is that now I do a steady state, I find the uh, steady state voltage, I take that steady state voltage and I feed it into my nonlinear inductance mm -hmm. uh, with the flux. It gives me harmonics of the current. For each harmonic of the current, I recalculate my steady state by superposition. I take back again my uh, voltage now has distortion. Recalculate my fluxes. Yeah. You calculate that uh, not in time domain, use the analytical equation of the transformer of the magnetization branch. Uh, however, you don't do it exactly like that because if you do it exactly like that, it will not converge. So you have to have a differential equation of the, uh, for every point, every Fourier series. So that will be the solution, yeah. Uh, Hydro Quebec? No, I don't think so. I think they, they, uh, the, the old days when they were using the old code, they were using my technique, but today they don't do that. They use directly the time domain. Yeah, the K factor is another thing, by the way. It has nothing to do with this. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you very much, uh, Abu Taleb.